Okay, it should be broadcast. We are live and recording.
Hello, all. Welcome for joining us. Welcome for joining us tonight. Um, we are going to wait just a few more minutes to let uh, other people join, but we will start um, around 5.35. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jen Santos, and I'm the Deputy Director for the City of Santa Rosa Parks section. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about the playground replacement options for the five to 12 year old playground area at Colgan Creek Neighborhood Park. Next slide, please. Um, and just to get you started, I want to I want to um, introduce two people you don't see here tonight, but they're helping in the background. Our uh, hosts for the meeting, 
Uh, Tim Bernard and Emily Ander will be helping uh, facilitate slide present uh, slide movement as well as um, the question and answer and polling. They'll be helping in the background. It takes three of us to run these meetings right now as we're learning. Um, and I've got a few, in, a little bit of information to read for you on how to participate in the meeting. Uh, so panelists and presenters, please silence your cell phones and keep your microphones muted if not speaking. Members of the public joining this meeting will have their webcams and microphones muted. If you're phoning in to join the meeting and you choose to speak up during the public comment portion of the agenda for privacy concerns, the host will rename you to caller and only show the last four digits of your phone number. Additionally, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully, or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. Um, and I wanted to let you know, we do have a question and answer period coming up. So if you have any questions at that point, we'll be taking them at that time. Uh, right now, I'll turn it over to our host, host Bernard, to explain how we will um, facilitate questions and answers and public comments. Yes, at the end of the presentation, the facilitator will open the floor for questions and answers and public comments. The host will lower all hands until the public comment item is open. Once the facilitator has called the public comment, the facilitator will ask the public to raise their hand if they wish to speak. Those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on those who have raised their hands. The host will unmute your microphone for your comment and then we'll mute you once you are finished speaking. The facilitator, host or co-host will respond to questions, to each question. And if follow-up questions are generated, you'll need to raise your hand again. Thank you. Thank you, host Bernard. Um, and I would like to get us started. We have, um, We'll obviously be asking you some of your opinions about the equipment and uh, taking question and answer later. But to get us started, I wanted to show you a map of the city of Santa Rosa with the yellow lines on there being Highway 101 running north to south and Highway 12 east to west. And the green items on this map are all of the parks in the city. And the park that we're gonna be talking about today, of course, is Colgan Creek Park and it's nearby where the star is located in the southeast quadrant of the city. The city has divided up its, um, its parks by quadrant. And so that's why we wanted to show you this tonight. As well as take a look at this, we will be asking you a question about which quadrant you live in later. So this might be helpful for you if you haven't thought about it that way. So we've got um, Northwest, which is west of 101 and um, north of Highway 12 and then northeast, which is east of Highway 101 and north of Highway 12, southeast, which is east of Highway 12 and south of Highway, uh, or east of Highway 101, excuse me, and south of Highway 12. And then southwest, which is on the west side of 101 and just south of Highway 12. Um, so just for your reference there, um, next slide, please. Thank you. So we wanted to zoom in a little bit tighter onto the park and you can see the park itself that we're talking about is highlighted in yellow, Colgan Creek Park. Um, the shopping areas to the left on the screen there are the um, Target, Costco, uh, Best Buy is in that area as well, just for familiarity, as well as Petaluma Hill Road on the right. Uh, Colgan Creek is a neighborhood park, which means that we uh, do not anticipate too many people driving to the park. We do anticipate more people uh, from the neighborhood area within a half mile. Uh, to visit this park, which means that some folks do have to drive to get there. Um, but the point is that it's a smaller park. Um, the typical things you would see in this park are what you have here. We've got uh, a two to five year old playground, as well as a five to 12 year old playground. 
picnic areas, uh, a half basketball court. Uh, we also have a multi-use uh, trail that runs along uh, the Kiwana Springs Creek on the side of the park there. Uh, this is uh, pretty much what you would see at a lot of community parks. This has a lot of standard um, options in it. And um, that kind of gives you the idea of, of the type of park compared to something like a community park, which would be a much larger park, more like 20 acres. Our park is about two, 2.6 acres. So uh, we just want to explain that to you so you have some general idea of, of the size when you were looking at the type of parks out there. Next slide, please. And uh, one of the reasons we're here tonight to ask you about our playground replacement options is this is the playground we need to replace. It's the five to 12 year old playground. And several years ago, it was damaged uh, by a vehicle and uh, the manufacturer no longer is manufacturing replacement equipment for this type of uh, playground. And uh, playgrounds are proprietary in that the pieces from one playground don't usually fit to the pieces of another manufacturer's playground. So uh, it makes it difficult for us to try to fix that one portion of the playground, unfortunately, which is leading us to need to replace the entire playground. Um, we, um, we know that there right now is, um, there are slides, climbing features. There's also um, uh, two double swings there that are really popular that we understand. So generally, this is the reason why we are replacing this because we can't um, we can't have something that is to uh, our safety needs to fit right into that playground. So we need to replace the entire thing. Next slide. And just a little bit of background for you about the park. It was dedicated, like a lot of parks are, uh, by a residential developer as part of the Summer Hill development to the city in 1997. Um, the area is 2.6 acres and um, the play equipment is uh, generally original from the original construction of the park. And in December of 1998, the park name changed from Summer Hill to Colgan Creek Park from the Board of Community Services. Next slide, please. And uh, many of our parks have something called a master plan. This is a plan that's approved by council for the type of amenities that are allowed in a park. And so we wanted to just share this with you so you can see this park does have a master plan which is fantastic. So we can skip that step and uh, roll right into replacement of the playground uh, without having to stop and um, produce a master plan. So next, next slide, please. Uh, so just to go through a little bit of the process from now until you get a new playground. <laughs> so um, we do have funding uh, secured through the park development impact fees that are collected in the Southwest zone. So that quadrant, the Southwest quadrant, when new developers come in for residential developments, um, they have options to either provide a park in the area or provide funding in lieu of a park so that the city can in the future um, improve on local parks or acquire new land for parks. Um, what's new for us in this city, a little bit new for us, is using a cooperative purchase process to buy not only the equipment itself, but the design of the um, equipment as well as permits and things like that, the replacement um, of the playground and the um, removal of the old playground equipment through a cooperative purchase agreement. Mm -hmm. And that agreement is um, a way for us to move quickly through a process to getting a new playground. Um, the, um, all right, sorry, it was just pointed out to me that this says Southwest and actually the funding does come from Southeast. I apologize for having to back up there. Um, so I wanted to let you know, so the cooperative purchase agreement um, is a type of agreement where you have all three of those options. So we're gonna do the design, the actual purchase of the playground equipment and the installation all in one process, helping us reduce the amount of time that it takes to get a new playground. Um, it does mean that we have to focus on one manufacturer that meets the requirements 
to use that purchase agreement. Um, and it does guarantee us the lowest price uh, in the state for that particular type of equipment. Um, it's a really nice way for us to move forward with replacement of a playground equipment when we do not have to expand the size of the of the area at all, which is which is a really great way for us to move forward with this. Uh, sometimes if we were going to take this through a whole master planning process, as well as expanding the playground, uh, that can take about three years. So we're hoping that this process about a six to nine month process uh, to get to the playground replaced. Um, the Cooperative purchase agreement will be with a local recreation equipment distributor uh, that provides um, playground equipment that meets the standards for the state of California and is also uh, durable enough to be used in a public setting like this. So it's a uh, really fantastic organization uh, locally that we're gonna be using a cooperative purchase to buy the equipment from. Um, and our part of the process is to do what we're doing tonight, collect feedback from you. Uh, we have some options and we really need your help to um, help us narrow down our selection process. Next slide, please. So we're going to go ahead and take a neighborhood survey now. This is just a simple survey about, um, you know, where do you live? How did you hear about the survey? Hopefully this will help uh, those of us using our devices, our electronic devices, get familiar with participating in a survey online. And so I'm going to turn it over to our host to describe how you can participate in the survey. Yes, all poll questions are single or multiple choice. You must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very bottom of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing a poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you may answer the second question, etc. If you're participating in the meeting via landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll will be will be available via the site city website until January 5th following the meeting. Please check srcity.org backslash 2448 backslash park hyphen projects to complete the survey. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and the facilitator will walk you through the results. Thank you, host Bernard. So let's go ahead and uh, take the poll and I'm gonna walk you through it as well. Uh, so number one, where in the city of Santa Rosa do you live? We're just looking for um, what quadrant you live in. This helps us understand where we're receiving feedback from. How did you hear about this meeting? You can tell us if you heard from um, multiple choice options there. And then how often, how frequently do you um, visit Colgan Creek Neighborhood Park? And we're also curious about how you might get to Colgan Creek Neighborhood Park. Is it mostly walking or never going? Oh, it looks like we're good. We have everybody's feedback. So there you can see the results now. So we've got everybody from the Southeast Quadrant, which is where the park is. That's fantastic. Um, folks have heard about it through postcards and word of mouth and social media. And we've got a lot of people visiting the park, 33% daily. And a lot of folks walk and drive to the park. And it looks like less than five minutes is how long it takes most people to get to the park. So I'll check in with our hosts. Uh, did everybody get a chance to participate? We have 10 of six of 10. Okay, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and end that poll. And hopefully that gives you a good idea of, of how to participate in the polling. And let's go ahead and start the, the go into the rest of the presentation. So the next slide, please.
So um, as I mentioned before, one of the things we're doing is using a cooperative purchase, which, uh, which requires us to choose a manufacturer. And from that manufacturer, we have some options from there to choose from. And so two options have come forward to us as um, options that are really great to fit in the existing space, require with all of the current um, codes relating to playground equipment and also provide something fun and new as well as something very similar to what was there in some of the options here. So we just wanted to make sure it was really clear that we're providing you with two types of options. Uh, these might not be the final options, but we hope to, your feedback today will give us some information on which direction we should go. Um, so we have the net play structure. That's the title for that type of equipment uh, for that playground. Uh, the reason it's titled that, there's a lot of net climbing systems as part of it. There's two traditional swings, which are very similar to what's at the park right now. There's also a what's called a crab trap climber. It's a big climbing structure. You'll see a picture of it soon. And also a spinner. The hedra play structure is the second option or first or A or B or C, however you want it. But it's the other option we have. Uh, this, the thing about this system is brand new for 2020. So it's really exciting. And it's a hexagonal shaped type of design and it has um, slides and swings and balancing very similar to what's there now, just a different style. It also has, instead of the traditional swings, it has an option for what's called an oodle swing, which is like a tire swing, a group swing. And it also has a sphere for moving and a gyro spinner. So we're gonna go into our next slide and look at the Netplex option first. We have three slides for you, pictures of that, and we'll go through it, and then we'll go through the Hedra, and then we'll ask you some questions about it from there. So next slide, please. So again, this is just one of two options, and we've got three images coming up for you. Next slide. So this is an image of the Netplex option. And if you take a look at it, you can see why there's a lot of net climbing features on there. We also have a, a slide with a little curve to it. Um, and we have another slide on the other side. You can get a glimpse of the swings to the left of this photo. Um, the nice thing about this net climber too is it also has a shade structure that's built in as part of the, as part of the equipment. There are balancing beams that come off of this equipment and connect to other parts of it. And in the back, you see the crab trap climber, which it's called. It's, it's a huge climbing structure, which is really fun with lots of tunnels in it and different types of climbing. And then you've got our spinner off to the right. So let's uh, go to the next slide and we'll show you the same equipment. So again, this is the same equipment we just switch to the other side of the playground <laughs> so you can get the other view of it. So again, right in the front central is that big climber feature, which is really fun. It's got some balancing parts to it as well as some tunnels and uh, different, um, you can climb all the way over it. Uh, and there's a traditional type of ladder slide um, to get up to a walkway that goes through it. It's, it's a really fun feature. And then you can see the net plex uh, in the back with the climber and the two slides. And, um, and behind that, you can't see it behind the crab timer is the, is the spinner. So this is just another way of looking at the same feature. Let's go to the next slide. And again, this is the, this is the same, same equipment, the Netplex option, and just a different way of looking at it. Sometimes it's hard and you really gotta get in there and look and see what's going on because uh, there is so much going on on these playgrounds. Uh, what we try to focus on is keeping, um, keeping children active. When they're on this, they're always moving. There's not a lot of platforms to stand around on. We really want to keep them moving right on to the next thing um, and really get their muscles working out and, and, and bring, their core, <laughs> bring their core up uh, and get very active on these playgrounds. And these new playgrounds do allow for that. Uh, but you'll see very similar things uh, to the playgrounds that's there, like the slides and the climber features and the balancing features. And there are the two traditional swings in this playground. And these playgrounds um, 
If you've ever been to a newer playground, it looks like everything's very far apart from each other. And the reason that we do that is there's something called a fall zone. There's an imaginary line around each equipment piece that's independent of each other. And uh, those lines really cannot intersect in order to keep kids safe from falling and hitting another um, play feature. So that's what it's designed to do to allow the extra bit of, of safety because we definitely don't want to have we want to have kids having fun on these play equipment. Um, so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of what the Netplex option looks like. Uh, the features in this can be tra uh, traded out. So the slides can be changed to some other type of slide. Um, the colors can be modified slightly. Um, if we don't like the little spinny thing, we can change that out. Um, so there's, there's a little bit more flexibility with this Netplex option. Next slide, please. And so we're gonna look at the Hedra option again. And again, we have three slides for this option. Next slide, please. So here you can see what I'm talking about. This is brand new, um, a, a brand new style of equipment uh, just out in 2020, uh, spring of 2020 is when it came out. And it's got that hexagon type of shape to it. It's a really fun um, type of, of structure. And in here, what you have is the structure itself, the piece itself, which has lots of climbing and balancing features. Uh, it's got a slide and a non-traditional slide where there's two bars where kids can slime, slide and climb up it. Um, there's also some uh, monkey bars, if you call it, or swinging back and forth, uh, which in the industry we call brachiating. Um, but that's where you're hanging on and you're swinging your body side to side. <laughs> and uh, we also have the um, global motion sphere. So maybe the newest version of what you might call a merry-go-round um, in the past. And it does the whole entire thing spins. And um, it's really, they're really, anytime you see these in the parks, they're very popular. Uh, we also have on this one a little different option to consider. That is the, uh, it's called the oodle swing, but it's, it's generally very similar to a tire swing where several, uh, several children can fit on it at one time or parents and kids. Um, it's, it's a really fun option to consider. Uh, and it, we also could, put in traditional swings here, two swings here as well, if this wasn't desired. Next slide, please. So here is, again, the same equipment, just a different view. Um, Cause again, you always can't see everything from every option. Um, so we have the structure itself, which has a lot of climbing option, balancing options and uh, sliding options. Um, and in the very back, uh, there's a little tiny spinner for one or two people to, uh, to spin on. Those are really fun, um, individual play by itself. And then we have the, the sphere, um, global sphere motion play equipment. Um, and then also the oodle swing, which you can see in this picture, they're showing several, several kids on this, which is fun. These are a fun um, type of equipment to include. And, um, Again, if this isn't something that's desired, we could place um, two, two uh, swing sets in there or two swings in there if we needed to, which is uh, what we have at the park in this play area right now. So next slide, please. And so again, this is the same equipment, just a different view. So you can see it a little bit closer. Um, and this is the Hedra option. And the difference with this is that absolutely nothing on this play structure can be modified, not even the color. It comes as a package, um, which is nice. And the playground man manufacturer can have it ready uh, quickly. Whereas if we change a bunch of components and things, it does take a little bit longer to put that together. Um, so you can see the global sphere. You can see it, there is somebody pushing it. It does spin. And the little tiny spinner in the back, the only thing that's out of this image is the group group um, swing, the oodle swing. So hopefully that gives you enough time to look at those. Next slide, please. So we're gonna go into a question and answer portion um, after this slide, uh, because I'm sure there's probably lots of questions 
uh, about this equipment. And we wanted to show the one of the both of the play structures together. So you've got the net flex play structure as one option and the Hedra play structure as another option. And both of them offer uh, very similar um, activities for children to do. Um, the Netplex play structure offers um, more climbing opportunities than the Hedra. And the Hedra has a little bit more of the ba balancing options as well as the larger spinner uh, component. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to the next slide and I'm gonna turn it back over to the host to describe how we, how, how we are gonna facilitate the um, question and answer portion of the, of the presentation. Yes, I have lowered all hands. Please raise your hand if you wish to speak. Those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise your hand. Host Andrew will then call on those who have raised their hand. The host will unmute your microphone for you for your comments and then will mute you once you have finished speaking. The facilitator, host, or co-host will respond to each question or comment as it is raised. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based on the response received. Okay, are there any question and questions out there that I can answer for you? There are two questions. We have two speakers. Um, first will be Lane and Tim, and second will be John. Lane and Tim, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please unmute your microphone. I will lower your hand and you will have, well, we have a courtesy timer, um, which will give you three minutes um, to speak. Um, okay, can you hear me? I can, and can you see the timer? I can. Hopefully, I won't Great. use all that. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering when you replace the play structure, will you also be taking out the existing sand and putting in a more rubberized surface? Thank, thanks for that question. Um, we will be removing the sand and replacing it with um, what's called uh, fibar. It's an engineered wood type of wood chip that's engineered to attenuate falls so that if somebody falls, there's, there's a bounce effect to it. So um, it's safer than sand. Sand's not compliant in the state of California anymore. I don't, I don't think it is compliant in the nation, but um, we will be removing the sand. The rubberized surfacing is, is typically not a choice we make because of its, um, it's not very sustainable. It doesn't last very long. It needs tons and tons of maintenance. And um, so we do look towards the wood chips, the wood chip option as, um, as a surfacing. And there'll be a ramp into the wood chip area to allow for um, folks that need it for ADA, um, for ADA access to the, um, to the play equipment. Hope that, hope that helps answer the question. The next public comment comes from John. Um, John, I will lower your hand and you'll have three minutes to speak. Um, please unmute your microphone. And can you see the timer? Yes. Okay. Um, your time begins now. Yes, a um, couple of comments. I just wanted to note that the park is um, uh, frequently graffitied current park. Um, so it's good or important to have less surfaces that are prone to tagging or graffiti. I guess there's gang activity in the area. So it seemed like the second option was had a lot of surfaces that could be prone to that. Um, second comment was the um, sunshades on, on the first 
structure and how durable are those? I know that my canopy lasts maybe two years in my backyard before it deteriorates and wasn't that looked like a fabric. And so I was wondering how durable that would be. Is it going to last 20 years or need to be replaced? Um, my preference is the first one. It looks um, like it has um, uh, better options. Um, we do have a kid in our neighborhood who uses the swings every day uh, um, and you know, almost all day. So he's on there for hours every day, I notice, um, and really likes the current traditional swings. And so it would be um, for that reason, I recommend keeping the traditional swing option. Um, and so that's that's uh, most of my, oh, the other comment, I didn't see it in any of the designs, but I just wanted to make sure there was no plans to install a bathroom or porta potty or anything like that, because uh, we don't want to <laughs> attract homeless people to camp in the park, which is a current problem. And we, two or three times a week, we have people trying to camp in there. So we don't want to add things that would make that more accessible, I suppose, or, um, more attractive. And other than that, I think there are a couple of great options. So thanks for doing this. Um, so our vote is for number one. That's it. Thank you, John. Um, thank you. And I, I hope you can stay on because we would really like you to participate in the poll and tell us that information in the poll so we can collect it as data. And um, I appreciate the information about graffiti in the area. Um, and for the for the shade uh, the shade sails that are on part of the equipment um, are extremely durable. Um, they won't need to be changed for ten to twenty years, depending. Especially when you pick a when we choose a lighter tan type of color, um, it's very very durable. Uh, I'm forgetting exactly what the manufacturer told me about it, but we have used this. Um, sage shale in the city quite frequently and it rarely needs to be replaced unless um, there is some sort of um, vandalism or something to it but otherwise uh, really durable and a very sustainable option for for shade and then uh, we do not have any plans to include any restrooms in this park so hopefully that answers your questions <laughs> for that is there are there any other i'll turn it back to the host to see if there's any other questions Yes, there's one more public comment or hand raised um, again from Lane and Tim. Um, I'm going to um, unmute your microphone and um, you may, and I'll lower your hand and you may begin your comments now. Okay, hi, um, one follow up on the rubberized, um, I've seen the rubberized surfacing go in on other parks in the city. I think Bayer Park um, had a rubberized surface. So I was just wondering if that was up to debate um, or open for a future discussion. And then also um, we have a couple of young children and they their preference would be a number one. So we'll stay on and um, do the survey at the end so you can record that information. Um, also, the existing path behind the park is really in terrible shape. I was wondering if there's any plans to reconstruct or repair or patch or do anything with that. Because, <clears throat> um, yeah, a lot of our, a lot of people walk on that route and it's really, terrible. It's a liability for the city, I think, at this point. Um, also, you had mentioned six to nine months. Is that to completion or is that to the beginning of construction? And then um, that starts from there. And then I was just wondering if you could share a little more information about uh, maybe the designer and um, the supplier that you're working with. And I think that's it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And um, with regard to the rubberized surfacing, 
um, Bear Park was one of the last parks that that type of surfacing was installed in. And almost the moment it went in, it was um, uh, vandalized. And we are constantly out there fixing that rubberized surfacing. It is, it is a lot of maintenance for us. And so we, we try to move away from that to something that is more sustainable for us and uh, ultimately safer because when, when the rubberized surfacing is vandalized, uh, it becomes really dangerous, a tripping hazard. So we do really try not to um, look at that for, especially for such a large playground uh, surface and outside. And they do, they do just attract an enormous amount of vandalism. So um, hopefully that answers that. Um, so we really do, we are gonna look at the wood chips going forward. Um, the uh, existing path information, I, I greatly appreciate that. I know that um, path has had trouble in the past with, um, uh, especially along the edges. So I'll definitely pass this information on to our park maintenance team to, um, to alert them that it's getting worse again. Um, I know that that trail has been, uh, has been um, a lot of maintenance over the years. And I am not aware of anything to, to replace the trail surfacing at this point, um, but I will be checking back. I'll check back in with our uh, park maintenance staff and, and let them know that it's in pretty bad shape. So I appreciate that. And the six to nine months is to have a brand new play equipment installed. So it's, it's the entire um, park process to, um, to get it in, from the moment you say what you like to actually having uh, the ability to play on it is six to nine months. That's of course, barring anything, um, um, anything unknown that we, we might not be aware of, but otherwise that's the plan, uh, which is, it seems, it might seem like a long time, but actually it's a really quick process in the scheme of things uh, for allowing us to quickly move and replace and replace that. So hopefully that answers that, that question. And um, of course, uh, We'll mention this again at the end of the presentation, but um, as staff are always available to have longer conversations or if you'd like to have a more detailed conversation too about anything, we can certainly have that. Um, all of our contact information will be at the end of this presentation. So um, if you feel like you need to con um, ha ha you know, continue the conversation or have another question that comes up after this presentation, certainly we are available here to help with um, with answering those and providing information. And I will look back to our hosts now to um, see if we have any additional questions or if we're ready to move on into our selections. Are there any additional public comments? Currently, I do not see any more raised hands. So I'll give you a moment. I don't see any raised hands, so I think we can move on. Okay, great, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and move on. And we do have our next survey for you. And at the next survey, when it comes up, we will um, be asking you what your preferences are. There you go. Um, and so we ask you the first question is what type of swing do you prefer? So for either option, you can have either type of swing. And then um, this is just great information for us to know uh, which playground features are important to you. It's really, it's really great for us to hear um, what's important for you all. And uh, I think most of them are self-explanatory. Brachiating is the hand over hand, typically called monkey bar type of action. And then which playground design do you prefer? We give you the options there as well as if none of those worked for you, we have that option as well, or if you like both of them.
And so I really appreciate your time, especially on the multiple choice. Um, th these are things we like to see. These, um, these six types of features on a playground are um, in the industry, what we talk about as far as what, um, what children like to use when they're on a playground. And so it's kind of fun for us to know as we roll into this, um, what's important. We have four of 10 um, attendees responses. Okay, great, thank you. Let's see. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the results then. Can we give just one more minute the, on the last oh, sure. um, poll? We had six, so I'm hoping we'll get, we now have five of 10. I'm hoping we'll get one more, one more response. Okay, great, thanks so much. Okay, we're holding steady at five. So I think that we can um, move on. Okay, thank you, host Ander. Okay, so there are our results for, um, for the type of preferences. So traditional swings are the preference there um, at 80%. And um, I appreciate the questions for number two. Uh, it looks like sliding is 100% preferred with a uh, follow behind by swinging and climbing. And um, on the question about which playground do you prefer, the net climbing structure is the preference 100%. So that, that is very helpful for us. Thanks so much for um, taking the time to take this survey. We just have a few follow-up slides to, to let you know what we're doing next and how you can keep the conversation going. So I'm going to turn it back over to our host to get us started with the, the rest of the presentation again. And just want to say thank you again for um, participating too and sticking with us. We are all learning this new technology, so I appreciate the <laughs> um, your patience as we as we navigate how to do this um, new technology. Um, if you've ever been to a city council meeting, they make it look really easy, but there is quite a bit going on in the background to make this happen. So, uh, for our next steps. Uh, we will, as we mentioned earlier, have an online survey. So if you felt like you had other comments that you wanted to make to us about the playground equipment or anything like that, or had any additional questions, um, the survey online allows you to type in information. So uh, if you felt like you couldn't give us the feedback that, um, in writing that you would like, that, avail that option is available. You can also notify your neighbors if they weren't able to attend tonight. That is near the holidays that they can um, go online. That will be available until January 5th um, when we will collect all the feedback from the, from the neighbors. And um, the final selection of the, of the playground equipment will be posted online on our website. And if you go to the Recreation and Parks uh, City website, uh, there's a selection for park projects and that's where the information will, will be posted. Um, as well as, um, again, the surveys there if anybody wants to take it. And just a reminder that that playground equipment does include the design that permits the demolition of the existing and installation of the new, of the new equipment. So next slide, please. And um, 
you heard from him tonight, Tim Bernard, who is one of our hosts for tonight's meeting, but he's also the project manager for this in, in the city. And so his contact information is there. Um, if you'd like to continue the conversation or have anything else that you'd like to bring to our attention, certainly uh, we're here to continue that conversation. And uh, we also have the srcity.org website listed there if you'd like to jot that down. Um, and then other than that, we'll can roll into the next slide. And I just want to thank you all very, very much. I know this is close to the holidays and virtual meetings are kind of tough because we don't get to meet in person. Uh, but I truly appreciate your time to be here and your dedication to your neighborhood park and improving it. We are looking forward to the results and hopefully we'll get you your new playground equipment soon. Thank you very much.